do. Do you understand? The things that your family, your friends will not even expect you to do. That's when we, I was talking to my wife earlier about balance. What's balance in the spirit mean? And the Holy Ghost told me, read Romans 8. She's going to understand. We're going to all understand what balance in the spirit means. Balance in the spirit is, is a way of us saying in our minds, see, we like to entertain a lot of thoughts in our heads. And sometimes the thoughts in our heads will almost catch us up because the reality is, is that we should be surrendering to the spirit of God, not the thoughts that are going through our head. Amen. See, God can talk to you. He gives you a brain. He gives you an opportunity to, to be on this great commission, right? You are co-partnering. Amen. He said he's the helper. See, one of the fruits of the spirit is what? Self-control. Amen. So if it's self-control, how are you being possessed? You're not possessed by the spirit of God. He, you surrender that control. You surrender the guidance. You say, God, I want to make a left, but Lord, what decision should I make? The Bible says that the footsteps of the, of the righteous are ordered by God. Meaning, and if you go on a to and fro and God sets things up, like we saw earlier at a park, <laughs> another man of God, I'm going to talk about it. Uh, not even another man of God, but potentially a man of God. But this little crazy boy who was playing, the Lord told me I was going to pray for somebody today at the park. Now I'm thinking of park at basketball. Then the lights got too dark or the, 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 it got real too dark in the afternoon. And I thought to myself, well, I guess it's not going to happen today, right? I said, I'm just going to get out of my kids. We're going to get out of the house, you know, run some of this uh, good old Thanksgiving uh, weight <laughs> off. And we're going to go play some tennis. So we go play at the tennis courts. And as we're playing the tennis courts, you know, I don't know what happened. But as we were playing, and maybe it was because we was playing some of the music. We wasn't playing no, like, major, like, uh, gospel music. But we was playing, like, a lot of hip-hop music. But it, it was, like you know, gospel centered, Christian, whatever, but we wasn't blasting it like Jesus, 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 you know what I mean? We was just playing stuff and we didn't even playing that loud because there's other people around us. But I started thinking like, God, is this something going to pray for us? Check this out. As we're playing and we've been here for almost more than an hour, some little random kid rolls up. He's like high school age, maybe ninth grade. I found out he jumps in literally our thing and jumps on the, on the bench right near us, we're playing, you know, we're doing a four on, a two on two, you know, my two girls against me and, Jer me and Jeremiah, but we're going back and forth and he goes and steps up and goes like this. He puts his arms out and steps on the thing and says, I'm a transgender. I said, what? I said, bro, what are you even talking about? But he, and then he puts his shirt, like, you know, people will try to be all fruity and stuff. And they just, Lord, forgive me. I'm not trying to speak like that. But they try to put their shirt up and show their belly and shirt. You know, they try to do stuff like that, right? I don't know. But back in the day, people used to make fun of, you know, you know what I mean? Like uh, that old and living color, you know, uh, hated it. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like those, I'm not editing none of that out. Those, That's a throwback for us uh, 80s babies here. So look, but when he did that, I knew instantly in the spirit because I've been speaking to God. And I said, him, really, God? Okay, that's fine. I'll wait. <laughs> and so I looked at him and said, oh, yeah, he don't even know who he just walked up to, right? So in the spirit, I went to him and I said, what does that mean? He couldn't explain himself what that meant. I know what a transgender means, but I said, what does it mean to you? I said, can you explain to me? Then he said something like, I'm gay or something like that. And I said, oh, really, you are? I said, is that genetic or? Who, which one's, you know, gay, your mother or your father? Like, tell me, I mean, you know, because you obviously had to get here through, you know, two different sexes. So tell me. And then he's like, oh, and then he just kind of comes up to me and goes, yeah, man, that's just the truth of there, you know, because he started realizing like, man, I'm trying to look like straight fool, right? But I'm trying to tell him, I'm not even going to put you on blast like that. I'm just going to let your conscience tell you what's up, right? So I just told him, I said, hey, man, what do you want to play with us? I say, oh, yeah, I can play a couple things. So I told him, come play with us. Jeremiah, I go like, oh, shaking his boots, like, oh, it's people. Let's go. And I'm like, Jeremiah, get out of <laughs> I said, go give him your racket, right? So he, he takes the racket and he starts, he said, I'm just going to hit a few balls with you guys. I said, okay, cool. I said, you play any other sports? And then he says, yeah. He says, I think I know your son. I said, oh, really? I said, well, maybe I know your parents. Where's your parents at? He tells me his parents' names and all that stuff. 
Because I'm thinking like myself, I'm looking out like he's obviously not in the right mind. The spirit of God is telling me the boy is full of demons. He got a whole lot of stuff going on. It just seems really off, right? And maybe there's some brokenness in his household or something. Then he admits and says, yeah, I'm not being raised by my real father like that. And then I share with him about fatherlessness and how even my father had struggled with stuff because he barely knew his dad. And that wasn't even his actual dad. And the only man that he actually ever knew only appeared to him, at least when he told me, maybe three, a handful of times in his life. And so the spirit of God was telling me, this is what happens when you have fatherlessness. This is when you happen when you have parents that really don't care about their children, right? They don't care about their children's natural and spiritual development. But I was like, thank you, Jesus, for him sin coming to me, right? Because in the moment, he was about to see what father, what a, a father is really concerned about. And I say, hey, man, what you hanging out with those guys? What y'all doing, you know? Oh, we're just skateboarding. We're just hanging out, stuff like that. I'll say, well, where are your parents? Da, da, da. Oh, no, we, you know, whatever. They just, you know, and I'm thinking to myself, like, he just going back and forth. We played a few things. The kids, like, played with them. Just made it all intent. We made them comfortable, right? But then I knew, okay, I'm going I'm to I'm give you a little good, you know, pat on the back. But you're about to get the Holy Ghost in a moment. You don't play with me, right? You're about to get the real deal, right? Real deal, Holy Phil. He comes over. And I, and I started talking to him. I said, man, I'm going to tell you something. The Lord told me that I was going to pray for somebody today. And I know that's you. And I said, you may not act like it. I said, but I'm going to tell you right now. You just thought you was doing truth or dare. I said, but I said, real? I said, God, God caught you. I said, like, you don't even understand. I said, that boldness, that's for the Lord. I said, that boldness is not for them. I said, they're trying to make you look. I said, they're trying to use you and make you look like, you know, he, a fool. I said, they laughing. You think everything is cool. He said, but they really laughing. I said, I'm trying to tell you that boldness is not for them. That boldness is for God. God gave you that boldness to serve for him. He said, yeah, my grandma talks to me about, you know, uh, uh, the word. She got 50 Bibles in her house. And I said, well, do you read any of them? Nah, not really. I said, well, I'm going to tell you right now. It's not coincidence that you ran to me. I said, I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to give you the real. So I talked to him. And I said, you need any prayer? No, oh, no, I don't need no prayer. I said, no, 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 you need prayer. Trust me, because the Lord told me. I said, anything going on with your household? He tried to be like, oh, kind of back and forth with it. And I said, look, I said, we're going to pray this prayer. And we start going through the prayer. I'm telling you right now, I asked him because the Holy Ghost told me exactly what to pray for him. When I started to pray for him and I said, Holy Ghost, touch him right now. Touch him with your love. Touch him with your fire. Touch him with your power, right? I'm telling you. He felt something. And not only he felt something, I saw them demons twitching all up inside his body. One of them gave a little smirk. He started kind of moving kind of weird. And then the moment he, he turned and he said, oh, this is kind of, he said, hold on. I feel kind of weird. And I said, no, that's the Holy Spirit. I said, just check. He started getting afraid. And then I started praying with them. And then a few tongues came out. And then he said, okay, okay. Uh, uh, I'm not, I'm getting scared now. I'm getting scared. He said, I got to go. I got to go. I said, listen to me. And I just kind of held his shoulder and I said, you need to be wise. I said, be very careful of what truth or dares you do again. I said, you may run into another man of God and he ain't going to be as nice as me. <laughs> I said, he's going to, I said, you're going to really, really feel somebody. And I was thinking of somebody in mind when he said that, because I said, look, man, I said, there's a calling on your life. I said, you need to be wise at this point. I said, and start following God. And he goes, oh, okay. He runs off and he's like super spooked. He runs off. The kids told me. I didn't even know that. I kept playing games. Naima comes over to my daughter and she goes, do you know that that boy just threw up? And I said, what? All over the entrance. Those things were so angry and so afraid inside of him. They were probably like, why did you even come over here? Do you know who you next to? Do you know? They tremble, guys. When you have the Holy Spirit, they are trembling on the inside. They do not want you to get rid of them. That's their host. That's who they live vicariously through. See, some of us, y'all going to see this, and you're going to say, oh, man, uh, Jamil, Jay, Jay is way off the deep end. No, read your Bible. Jesus was doing this. He wasn't just, see, we look at the chosen. We look at the soft, pretty Jesus. Huh? He's like, God, uh, I come to you. You know, I'm talking about that show, right? The chosen. They got the soft, pretty Jesus. That uh, maybe one show, maybe two, two of them, that he actually cast out some demons. But to be honest with you, 
He was doing that all the time. In fact, most of the people, the Bible says that those that he healed were oppressed of the devil. People don't understand. Guys, there are some things that we've been explaining in the natural human centered. Our minds are so, you got to understand. We worship ourselves to the point where we label everything and say, God, you don't exist. The spirit doesn't exist. We figure out and we label everything. You understand? That's the Tower of Babel. We put our science up and all of our accolades and everything else and act like no information came from the spirit. Like there was no unseen world. There is no possibility that we got our information from other things. Come on, man. That's a, that, we know that's a lie from the pit of hell. There's a lie that wants us to believe that they don't exist. Why? Because they can keep control that way. They will, it's, that's, the, that's the best deception, he says, is what? Is convincing the world that he does not exist. Amen? And convincing Christians that they can't actually be influenced by him. That's the second deception. And most Christians have been deceived that way. I was deceived at one point that way. And I had the Holy Ghost. Because I believed in these traditions of man when people will say stuff like, Oh, yeah, you know you ain't never going to be able to, like, you, you, you can't really live holy, right? Like, you can't, you're going to struggle with something. You know that, right? They put stuff in your head just because you ain't really walking in the newness of Christ, just because you want to actually feel comfortable with the sin that you're living in. And God is saying, no, you actually, it does have, have power. You were given, Second Peter says, anyone that is born again, listen to me, you were given a new nature you were given a divine nature it came from above you are literally a part of a spiritual family now that god has intended to be you are intended to be reconcilers of god you understand what that means you are called to be new creations in christ meaning in whoever you reach whoever you reach god is looking at it like this that person is meant for you to either disciple or share the word of God with or demonstrate God's power in your life. So when I, I'm asked, where's the balance? Guys, listen to me. It's whatever the Holy Ghost wants to do in that moment. I was playing games with my family. And instantly in the spirit, I knew it was what time it was. Because when you spend time with God like that, you know that whatever God wants to do, that's what he's going to do. I didn't know he was going to run off. I didn't know that the power of the Holy Ghost was going to make him go, ah, right? And he didn't scream like that, but he ran off because he he kind of was like, wait a second. I didn't ran into the wrong thing. I didn't pick the wrong brother to do two the dare to, you know? And I know that we have this TikTok microwave generation. Everything's instant. Everything's like, let's do a quick little, you know, whatever. But the reality is, is that God loves people so much that he would even allow something as silly as that. Because I told him, I said, it's not coincidence. In fact, when I was telling him to renounce certain things, you know what I knew was up? He couldn't He couldn't continue. Because I said, hey, uh, I'm going to ask you to repeat some things. And then when I said, uh, God, he said, help me to be, I said, told him something about to be serious. He said, no. And I said, oh, so you don't want to listen now. And so then I said, okay, I said, do me a favor. I said, I, I feel your heart beating because as I was holding him, the Lord was saying his heart's beating because these demons are scared that you're going to find them and you're going to kick them out. And so I said, okay, you need to take a deep breath, take a deep breath, relax. And then that's when they really, really started getting annoyed and they, he started moving kind of weird. And I was like, oh, okay, I know I, I was ready. I'm telling you, if he was going to start spinning in circles on the ground, I was ready. I was about to call everybody out and say, throw your rackets down. It's time to get this thing out. And if we don't even know if his friends would have came over, I would have got them too. Everybody would have got hit by the Holy Ghost. It would have been like a Holy Ghost drive-by, straight up. I would have been like, da, 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 da. everybody would have got hit, right? No, for real. I was waiting. I was like, come on. Like, you about to get it. You know, like what Daniel Adams say, get him, Holy Ghost. Right, get him. Like, <laughs> like, like, sick him, you know, sick him, right? But no, for real. But I was looking at it and I was thinking like, they're either going to scatter like roaches or they're going to come over and be touched by the power of God. But when he ran off, I knew they was like, oh man, that dude. And I said, I said, you don't have to tell them what happened, but if you tell them what happened, you better tell them the truth, you know? And he ran off and then he threw up, you know? And so even if 
they was doing some sideways stuff. I didn't smell no alcohol in his breath. I didn't smell no, I didn't see nothing in his eyes that showed me that he was on some type of uh, narcotics. But I did feel in the spirit that he felt the Holy Spirit and it spooked him. It spooked him straight up. And I've been on that side before. I remember people praying for me when I didn't have the Holy Ghost and some inside of me said, let go of the hands. <laughs> some said, let go of the hands right now. I literally was like, oh, I said, I feel something. I'm good. And the guy was like, no, let me keep praying. I was like, no, I'm fine. I don't want to pray anymore. <laughs> this was years ago, but I remember it like it was yesterday. A man of God prayed for me in the Holy Ghost. He started speaking in tongues. I started feeling kind of weird. And I said, oh, no, nah, man, we good. I said, we're, we're fine. We're like back up. You know, I wasn't trying to tell him that, but everything inside of me was like, get him out of your house. See, that's how you know you off. Because you got things telling you, telling the man of God, get away from me. That's how you know a real man of God. He ain't going to make you feel comfortable. And hear me out in the spirit, guys. Jesus did not make people feel comfortable. Jesus did not. When he talked to that rich young ruler, he told him, sell everything you have. You really think that you want eternal life? Sell everything you have and follow me. And that man was sad because he knew his riches, his lifestyle, his pride of life, his career, his ambition was his God. That's what was his idol. So he broke the commandment. He thought he kept everything as a youth. And Jesus said, no, you didn't. You lack one thing. I'm not your God. The things are your God. Your career is your God. Your possessions, your ambition is your God. And some of us are like that. We want to be like, God, Lord, help me. Be my savior. Be my savior. But what about him being your Lord? What about being him? What is, is God not our Lord? Is he not the one directing us? See, we want God's salvation. I want God's protection. But I don't want what? I don't want his direction. You understand? So when you have the spirit of God, you submit to God's power, but you also get his protection and you get his direction. And see, that's what's so important about being, having life in the spirit, operating from Romans 8. And please go there if you have an opportunity. I'm on Romans 8. It says, so now there's no condemnation that those are in Christ Jesus who belong, who belong to Christ Jesus. You're not condemned as long as you belong to Christ Jesus. How do you become? How do you belong? Be, be born again and do not walk according to your flesh. Meaning in your flesh is going to have desires. We understand that. But here's the thing. Some, another man of God said, your flesh is not really supposed to be speaking to you it has inclinations right there's natural things it wants to do what's the the number one thing our flesh wants to do eat <laughs> eat and sleep eat and sleep that is the literally those two things when you're lacking it what happens to your body you can become cranky angry upset short-tempered everything comes from that that was the very thing that jesus was tempted in though right let's be real you think he got a lot of sleep in the desert while the enemy was tempting him for 40 days and 40 nights? And literally, he did not eat any food. So he was like, literally, I'm telling you, he wasn't on no keto diet. He wasn't on no, uh, you know, uh, Atkins. <laughs> he wasn't on none of that. He wasn't eating stones. He wasn't eating nothing. No, no, no cactus, no whatever. Goji berries. He wasn't eating none of that stuff. He was literally. In the spirit, he said, man shall not live on what? Bread alone. But what? Every word that proceeds out of the what? Mouth of God, the word of God. That's how he fought. He fought with scripture. That's the word. The Bible, see what you guys don't know. The scripture, the Bible says that this is, see, okay, this is a book here, right? But in the spirit, this is a sword. You guys don't understand. Words are what change things in the supernatural. They operate by words because words are what? They are unseen, guys. How can you see your own words? You got to write it down, but you hear them, right? And what is, so if you hear voices in your head that tell you something crazy, like you driving and all of a sudden says, drive over the side of the cliff. Is that you speaking? Is that really you speaking? No, it's a demon speaking to you, a demon of suicide telling you, go do this. Go drink this alcohol and take these three pills and see, say sayonara because you don't have any purpose. That's a demon, guys. That's a demon. And we all been there. We know we have some crazy whacked out thoughts. 
And that's the spirits trying to mess with you. And, and here's the thing. If you still got stuff into you constantly, you can actually still have something that they like to hide in your body. That's why deliverance is so important. Deliverance, is, the Bible says deliverance is the children's bread. Meaning Jesus said deliverance is God's way of saying, I love you so much that I want those demons out of your body. I don't want to see you go through that tournament. You do not have to keep having those same thoughts, those same nightmares, those same whatever. That, that's what deliverance is about. Jesus did it. And he said, those that believe are baptized. Those are believe and are baptized are what? Saved. And these are the signs that follow those that believe. A born again believer will what? They'll drive out demons, right? It says you'll cast out demons. These are the signs. This is how you know a believer. You cast out demons. You heal the sick. You take up serpents. You speak in diverse tongues, right? New tongues, not old tongues, new tongues. Amen? They said if they drink something deadly, it will not actually poison you. It won't harm you. So all these things, they, they rise, this, they, 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 they pull up the sick. So God is saying this. This should be following your life. This should not be something that was just archaic and only for this time of the scriptures. No. God was saying this for everyone, that he's called us for these things. And only by living in the spirit will you actually be able to do this stuff. There's no manual for it. It's be walking in the spirit. The Bible says, have childlike faith. This is what it is. That's what he says. If you, if you read that little last part on uh, Luke 10, I'll hold it just for a second. But that little last part, you know what he says? He says this. Luke 10 and 17. Sorry. It says Luke 10 and Luke 10 when they said that um they said that uh that even the what register in heaven. So this is what Jesus says after they they talked. The, remember the group of the people they cast out demons, they said, Oh, we're so happy. They they listen, they listen to us, they they obey us, right? He said, No, be happy. I'm paraphrasing, but be happy. Your names are written in the book of life. Your names are registered in heaven. That's what you need to rejoice. And then Jesus said at that same time, 21, Luke 10, 21, he said, Jesus was filled with the joy of the Holy Spirit. And he said, oh, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, thank you for hiding these things from those who think themselves wise and clever. Oh, that kills. For all the people that think they're the just grand theologians and you got to have every seminary or you got to have this, check this out. God is not about the haughty. God is not about the proud. God is not about how much head knowledge. He never said how much knowledge you have of this word. No, he said them that believe, them that have faith. Faith is trusting and obeying in God. Faith is being faithful. Amen. Is not saying I'm gonna do this over here. Like if you like, let's keep it real. Like my wife and I, we're married, amen. But if I was like being unfaithful, that means I'm choosing something else other than my wife that I'm supposed to be faithful to, amen. That's the same thing for God. God is saying, if you're faithful to me, you will what? Keep my if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Those are your love, you really become faithful to, right? You know the people, the the uh, the we call it the uh, what's that term? <laughs> they uh, man, I don't even know, like rider dies, or you know what I'm talking about, like day ones. There you go, day ones. Okay, day ones are faithful <laughs> no matter what. You may do something crazy, they just right there, like I'm, I'm with you, right? And God is saying, like, I want beyond even your day ones, I want that type of love, right? That like commitment, that faithfulness, and He's saying. God in heaven, I thank you for hiding these things from the super wise, the super clever people that think they just know everything, the, uh, the, 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 the bill, whatever, you know what I'm talking about, the super extra intellectuals, the ones that say, oh, yeah, uh, we came from a black hole or whatever, you know, the ones that just super wide off and don't feel like they need to even have God, right? The atheists, the, all the people that are so heady in their human reasoning. He's saying, yep, go keep that. Go keep that. Because this is hidden from y'all. <laughs> this is special knowledge only for who? It says, 
for revealing them. God did it that way. I love it. He says, and revealing them to the childlike. He hid it from the wise. He hid it from the clever. He said, I'm going to give it to the childlike. The people are like, look at what we did. We just killed some demons. Yay, right? He didn't, the super heady knowledge ones that overthink it, like, oh, oh we just got to put this square with this and this equation with that. Or, oh, no, I don't understand this. Like, you got to explain to me, you know, I need to understand the deeper things. God is like, no, just do what I say. Go, right? <laughs> like, believe in what I'm saying. I'm telling you this, that this is how the way the world really operates. And that's why the demons don't want you to really know this. They don't want you to know that this is how you should be operating. This is how you really should be operating in the spirit. This is how you should navigate your world now. Is It's not really, it's not a world that is really under your 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 control. You've, give, you've been given power and authority, but it's now you surrendering to the will of God for your life. When you start to realize the Bible says that all things are created by him and for him, and that you are called according to you are called according to the purpose of God. Like really, the Bible says we're conformed. We were um, predestined and we were called to be conformed. That's, the, that's, that's a hard statement because some of us think that we just appeared through our mommy and daddy and we're just like, oh, my, I always felt like I was supposed to be this. Or I was supposed to be that. And God is like, no, you got to check in with me to know what you really are supposed to be doing because your identity really lies in Christ. Not just since what some third grade teacher told you, you know what I mean? Or what like your mama and daddy say that you was going to be, or let's keep it real, what you ain't going to be, because they like to say that a lot too, right? This is what you're not going to be. You're not going to be this. You're not going to be that. And you hear all that negative, 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 right? And that comes from uh, negative spirits of oppression, because that's really what spirits do. Uh, Evil spirits are not, they don't, uh, there's very few, like I want to say very few, but There's a difference when people say possessed and oppressed. The devil comes to oppress you, right? Like when you're a man of God, even people out there, there's very real, unless you're under a lot of like narcotics or drugs or things that are like mind altering substances, that's the only way that you can really be, I would say, qualified as a person that's possessed, right? By demons or something. Most people are not that, they're just oppressed. They have a lot of negative thoughts and they don't know that those negative thoughts are coming from the spiritual wickedness in high places. They're coming from demons. And some demons have come through their lives, not by things that they knew. Like I was just finding out and I hope you don't practice this because there's a lot of things. But if you do yoga stretches, I'm going to keep it a buck. You may avoid all the the ohms and you may avoid all the, the, the channeling. But yoga was actually designed for yogis, right, or for people to put themselves in positions to actually have sun salutations to the different gods, right? These different gods are not really gods, guys. They're demons. They're spiritual wickedness and darkness. And what they do is when you do that, if you're really, really about that transcendental meditation and new age and yoga, they're, you're basically saying, these demons come, come into my spirit. And they even teach this stuff. They talk about people having spirit guides. It's old stuff just packaged up new. It's the old stuff that happened in the ancient text of, of even the word of God spoke against it. It says, when people have mediums, right, that when you do yoga, like it's a version of channeling your body and the stretches are designed to actually pull in these things. And that's why even Christians don't even know that. It's like, well, I'm just stretching. Well, you don't even know those positions were designed to actually channel in these things. They Look, they've been here thousands of years, way before even man came here. And they literally said, we ain't going to do it God's way. We're going to mess with his creation. And this is how we're going to do it. So God could be like, okay, well, I can just, just clean up everybody else. No. He said, my will is going to go forward. I'm still going to choose mankind and I'm still going to bless them, but I'm going to use my son and those that are now filled with the spirit. Guess what? Y'all get to come against them. Y'all get to actually wreak havoc. I think I spoke to you about that. You actually are the ones that are able to wreak havoc against their 
their kingdom. Whenever, listen, whenever a command comes from the spiritual wickedness in high places, the demons get instructions. They go into people's life. They search. The Bible says that Satan is like the commander. Like he's looking to and fro, someone he can devour, right? And a lot of times we give them legal access to those things, the stuff that we ain't supposed to watch. The people, we can be hearing things and not even know, or we can be thinking about uh, people that we have not forgiven. And what happens? A uh, root of bitterness creeps up. And after a root of bitterness creeps up, then guess what? The Bible says that it becomes poison. And then eventually it affects different parts of your body. And so now you start to look at people a certain way. Even the sound or the mention of somebody's name that you don't like or you have some issues, it like stings you. You ain't made, You can hear somebody say something good. Oh, so-and-so came by today. You're like, Ugh. I don't even like to hear that, right? Because something deep inside of you has not been pulled out. The Bible says, let every root of bitterness, root of bitterness, be pulled out. Because just like those trees in the back, when I've been cutting stuff up, I'm telling you right now, you can cut. We got bamboos back there and all types of vegetation. I have sliced stuff at the top. I'm telling you right now, in a few more months, water's going to hit. Them things going to spring right back up. Why? Because you didn't deal with it at the root. You didn't deal with it at the root of the situation. So the root of a lot of situations of why demons come into our lives is because we're not, one, walking in the spirit. Two, we're not seeking deliverance like we need because most deliverance, I'm going to be real, comes from either spending time with God, like being in your prayer closet, praying in the spirit, praying in tongues, and that thing starts to, God starts to purge certain things out. You start to renounce those things out of your life. You renounce depression. You renounce anxiety. You renounce anger. You renounce those things. You renounce addiction to alcohol or just addictions, period. You said spirit of addiction. I want you out of my body in the name of Jesus. But here's the thing. Most deliverance happens from another person. Meaning in deliverance checks your pride at the door. You got to say, look, I got to be vulnerable to somebody and I got to get prayer. You got to say, God, I don't have this thing all together. I'm worn with stuff. I need your help. That's what really this is all about. You see God in such a way where you say, Lord, I know that there's somebody. Now, if you're like that other man of God I, I watch on TV, uh, Alexander, Apostle Alexander Pagani, he got deliverance in his jail cell. There was no one else to pray for him. So he had to go through a book that called Spirit of the Bondage Breaker, and he renounced things in a jail cell, and God delivered him from stuff. But he still had a demon of rage because when he, he said, even when he became spirit-filled, baptized, he prayed with the other men and women of God. He said he was at a church meeting, and he said he started to manifest. He started to get upset about something, and he said all of a sudden, he realized, they said, all he remembers, he blacked out, he got so angry, he was on the ground, and he was moving like a snake, screaming and yelling. He said, on one side of my brain, he's like, oh my gosh, I'm finished. My whole church is gone. Right. He said, they seen the man of God like this. They, they gone. Right. He said. And then he heard somebody faintly in the back said about time he got some deliverance. Right. Like they already knew that something in his character was showing that he had something. And he said he had a demon of rage. Right. He was he was angry. He said he would go preach messages, come back home and punch holes in the wall. Like that's not <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Where is that coming from? Right. So instead of just, and a lot of times, I'm going to be real because I hear this in the spirit. For those watching and those hearing, not everything that you do is really your personality. I'm going to be real. I haven't heard another man of God say that. He said, you know, when you see a lot of depression on people, he said, that's a demon of depression. And it causes the person to think that they're supposed to be that way. And the reality is they're supposed to, God meant for you to be the most joyful person around people. God wants you to be joyful. He said, because usually it's the enemy will watch and say, I'm going to take their joy away and I'm going to replace it with depression. I'm going to take them from being a happy person and I'm going to make them be sad. Or I'm going to make them be the most like courageous person and now I'm going to make them fearful. You see what I mean? He tries to find different ways. And then you all of a sudden think that's just my personality. That's just who I am. The devil is a liar. We're not that. You are your own real, honestly, your true personality, your true identity is in Christ Jesus. 
That's why it's so important to chase him. That's why it's so important to, to, to find out what God, what God is really saying through this word, right? This word that most of the time we read two seconds and we don't believe, right? Keep it real because you got something telling you not to believe it that way or something telling you that it ain't all that deep. Like, you know, I almost feel like that's what my wife was going earlier. <laughs> she was like, why are you praying for that dude like that? It ain't all that deep. You should have just told that boy, get out of here. Scram, like scam. But I heard the Holy Ghost tell me, look, you're praying for somebody today. Be ready for them. The Bible says be ready instant, in season, out of season. All right, we're almost done. We're going to go back to, to Romans 8 and then just get out of here. We'll go to Ephesians another day. But here's what he's saying. Go to, <laughs> we really need to. It says, uh, life in the spirit. Romans 8. It says, and because you belong to him, the power of God.